Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today, Leveraging the Power of Lucidchart in the Classroom. My name is Dave Palmer, and I will be your presenter today. I'm a product expert here at Lucid for Education. So a couple of housekeeping things. First, we've done our introduction. I, uh, I've worked in education technology for the past six years, uh, teaching educators like yourself how to get the most out of their tech resources. And I'm really passionate about teaching and empowering educators to use Lucidchart. Um, we are going to be recording this webinar, so if you'd like a copy of it, we can send that out as the, as, after the webinar ends. And we'll also be putting this up on our website so that you can find it uh, in the future. We won't be taking any questions during the recorded portion, but we will have some Q&A after the recording finishes. Um, all right, let's get started. So we often hear the question, how are teachers and students using Lucidchart? Today we're going to actually show examples of how, how they are using Lucidchart to create engaging assignments and activities that leverage the power of visual learning. So to accomplish our goal, we will start with an exercise that explores the power of visual learning. Then we're going to discuss how to leverage that power in the classroom by creating an assignment from a template in three easy steps. Next, we'll expand our knowledge by learning how to embrace a blank canvas and bring creative ideas to life. And finally, we're going to discover how both teachers and students can collaborate simultaneously inside Lucidchart as well as take advantage of our integrations to increase your ability to work within Lucidchart. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with an example here. Why is visual learning so important? We're gonna do a basic exercise and I'm going to show you two visuals. The first one is going to be right behind the left eye. Let me go ahead and click on it. Okay, what did you see? Hopefully, you have a good idea about what you saw in the brief time the image was shown to you. Now I'm going to show a second visual. This one will be behind the right eye. All right. What did you see this time? What, why was it that this one was not so easy to see? Let me show both of them side by side. As you can see, the first is a blue square, and the second is the description of a blue square. Why was that first visual so much easier to grasp in such a short period of time? Part of the reason is that 90% of all information transferred to the brain is visual. And in fact, we're capable of getting the sense of a visual scene in less than one tenth of a second. Because the mind is designed to grasp visual input infinitely faster, visual learning is vital in the classroom. It allows students to organize and analyze complex information identify patterns and relationships, and integrate new knowledge, all of which increases students' critical thinking and retention of learning. This is why we're so passionate about visual learning. When students are able to grapple with information at higher orders of thinking because of their visual processing, they can develop the skills needed in today's world. I'm sure that many of you are familiar with the four seeds of education, critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and communication. These are commonly referred to as the 21st century skills. But these are not just nice to haves. They are essential in the workplace and are some of the very skills that we hire for here at Lucid. But let me give you a quick example. One of our core values here at Lucid is teamwork over ego. For us, that means that the needs of the group outweigh the needs of the individual. And, that's, and that all ideas are important. We rely on individuals to collaborate together to help us continually improve. Now, though education and experience are very important to us, if a candidate can't collaborate well with their team, they're not a good fit. There have even been some cases where someone with seemingly stronger qualifications was passed over for someone that more closely met our values. All right, now that we understand why visual learning is so important, let me show you how educators have been using Lucidchart in their classrooms to actually put the four C's into practice. The first example is a mind map, and it is probably the most common reason educators initially find Lucidchart. Mind maps help students critically think about a concept or generate, excuse me, generate creative ideas. For example, students might develop a business idea or analyze the food groups or depict, depict the, uh, their knowledge of Mesopotamia. And as they connect new materials to their schema, they improve retention and recall. Now here's an example of a process map. In this template, 
we are making complex information easier to conceptualize. In this case, students can more easily visualize the abstract writing process, which enables them to work within that process to better communicate their ideas. Concept maps are a great way to teach a difficult concept or for students to demonstrate learning. In this student created example, a teacher gave the students the assignment to show the three different classifications of rocks, sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous, as well as how they are related to one another. So this example showed the student demonstrating their knowledge using images to create their concept map. In this second example from the same assignment, this student chose to use shapes to demonstrate their same knowledge. If you were to look at each student's work, no two would be the same, but they all would have demonstrated the same principle. Lucidchart allows for such flexibility. We're actually going to be working through a concept map, uh, a concept map example here in just a moment. Timelines are also easy to create on Lucidchart and help students organize information so they can critically analyze it, such as laying out the events leading up to the American Revolution or the timeline of Disneyland. And then they can determine causes and effects. Here, a school district in Utah divided a class into four groups. Each group was given one of the sections of the map that you see on the screen. In the original example, each group plotted volcanic eruptions using pe excuse me, pencil and paper on their portion of the grid. Once they completed their initial task, they put their pieces of the, pieces of the map together and the teacher asked them to describe what patterns they saw. This introduced the concept of the Ring of Fire, which is a major area in the basin, in the basin of the Pacific Ocean where many earthquakes and volcanic eruptions occur. Now the teacher decided to take the same activity and do it in Lucidchart. And they actually had administration watching as well as other teachers as they had two classes side by side one using pencil, pencil and paper, and the other using Lucidchart's collaborated collaboration features. Now they noticed a significant increase in the engagement in the group that used Lucidchart. This example showed the students the power of collaboration as they saw how individual, contr individual contributions came together to make a greater whole. Now finally, story maps are a fantastic way to teach students to work with story structure for better comprehension. This technique uses visual resources, visual resources and representations to help students organize important elements of a story. Students learn to summarize the main ideas, characters, settings, and plot of an assigned reading. Now, finally, as you can see, I have been presenting inside Lucidchart using something called presentation mode. This allows you to turn areas of your canvas into a slide. You can also export those slides to Google Slides or even Microsoft PowerPoint. Now that we have a good idea of how educators are using Lucidchart in the classroom, let's dive in and get started creating our first assignment. We can create an assignment using three easy steps. Choosing a template, customizing it to our specific use case, and then assigning it to our students either through an LMS or directly through Lucidchart's sharing features. I have in mind to create a Venn diagram like the one that you see here on the screen. All right, now to get started, when you log into Lucidchart, you'll come up with a screen that looks something like this. You'll have folders here on the left-hand side. Obviously, you won't have created anything yet. You can create folders underneath folders. You can even share folders. You might see some uh, template to ideas here at the top, as well as anything that you've created here on the main screen. If you'd like to create a new diagram, you can do that through our templates, or you might create something brand new by creating a blank document. Now, if you want to start using one of our pre-built educational templates, you can do so by clicking on the education links here on the right-hand side. Now, this is going to help us create our first assignment. Okay, so let's assume that I want to create an assignment that will help my students learn how to compare and contrast. I want them to visually organize this information so that they can identify relationships and make abstract ideas more comprehensible. So to do this, I want to create an assignment using a Venn diagram template. As you can see, there are many options to filter. We've got by grade, subject, content type. In this case, I'll use a graphic organizer. 
and even skill taught using one of the four C's. And you'll notice that I've got some selections here. So let's go ahead and look at this two set Venn diagram. By clicking on it, I can see a thumbnail of maybe something that I could use. So I can see this looks similar to the, the uh, Venn diagram that I had created earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and click on open template and this will then create a copy of that template in my Lucidchart account. All right, it doesn't look exactly like what I had created. We're gonna go ahead and make some changes. But before we do that, um, I want to show you, to get you a little bit more familiar with what you see when you open up your Lucidchart documents. On the left-hand side, we've got a toolbox. We have some standard shapes loaded here by default, but we can also customize the shapes that we are seeing by activating new shape libraries. In this case, we have shapes specific to a Venn diagram. We can also rearrange how they appear or even create our own custom shapes that we can work with. The canvas occupies most of the editor. We have options to customize the background, adding or removing grid lines, and adjusting the size. Up here toward the top, our menu bar offers most of the standard options that you're used to in other software applications. And just below, we have our properties bar, which is what we're going to use to format and stylize our shapes, text, uh, lines, and also add some interactive links. On the right-hand side, you can see how we might share directly with somebody else. We'll talk about this a little bit more in depth in a minute. And on the far right, we have a number of different options on our content panel here on the right. There's a lot of features here that we will not be going over in this webinar, but we will be talking about things such as um, presentation mode, adding comments, and revision history. Okay, now if I were an elementary teacher and I wanted to customize this template to help my students learn to compare and contrast the differences between frogs and toads, I could start by making some changes. All right, in the example that I had, it had each section was using some bullets. Let's go ahead and start on our left-hand side. What we're going to do here is we will select alignment and I'm gonna make this aligned top and to the left. Then I'm gonna to come to text options and add some bullets. This seems a little bit bigger than I want with the text. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the text just a little bit smaller. We'll make that an 18. And now I can double click and add an option. And the first option here I'm gonna put, we'll do frogs on the left-hand side and toads on the right-hand side as we are comparing and contrasting the difference between the two. So I'm gonna go ahead and give them the first answer. Frogs live in water. All right, let's go ahead and expand this out. And then we'll give, get that ready. All right, I'm going to go ahead and delete the other two options. In this case, I just want to copy this example and into my next, my middle section for my similarities and my right-hand section for the toads. I'm gonna to use a shortcut, which is holding down Alt, a left click and drag. Makes it really easy for me to drag that content out. All right, for live and water here, this is gonna be our similarity. We'll put that they're both amphibian. On the right-hand side, toads live on land. Let's make it easier to distinguish the two Venn circles by giving them a title. To do so, I'm gonna select a text box and click and drag that onto my canvas. I think I'll make this one a little bit bigger. And then I will give the title frogs. And then using that same tip that I'd given you before, alt, left click and drag, I'll copy this and add toads. Okay, so we've gotten this started. We're getting them some ideas of how they can finish out this as an assignment. Now, let's say we wanna give some instructions. The example that I used had a sticky note that I drug out onto my canvas and added some text that said, please add additional differences and similarities, um, comparing and contrasting the differences and similarities between frogs and toads. Okay, we could add additional information if we'd like to, but we're gonna keep this basic for now. All right, so now that we have selected our template and we have customized it, we're going to assign it to our students using Google Classroom. We're gonna focus on Google Classroom in this video, but you would also share this using uh, Canvas, 
Schoology or directly with a link. To share with Google Classroom, we're going to come to the top right hand side, select the connect to Google Classroom button, and then we'll click create assignment. You may need to connect your Google account if it's the first time that you are using this integration. From here, we can edit the title. Notice that the title that it used is the same as the title of the document. Let's call this frogs versus toads. We can give it some other instructions. Select our classroom, we'll keep this in science. Give it a due date. And then ultimately, we can determine if we want to assign directly by publishing or create this as a draft. If we create this as a draft, that will give us the opportunity to go and add additional content inside, inside Google Classroom. I'm gonna go ahead and just assign this to the student. Okay. So at this point, the student is notified that an assignment is posted in Classroom. They'll click on the link inside the assignment, which will allow them to open up the assignment in their own Lucidchart account. This assignment will automatically attach the student's name, and then the student can then add additional points to the Venn diagram. Once it is ready, the student can then click on the same green button. In this case, they will turn in the assignment. So as you see in just three easy steps, we've created an assignment using Lucidchart. We selected a template from the assignment from the template library. We customized it to our specific use case. In this case, we took our two set Venn diagram, turned it into a compare and contrast activity for comparing and contrasting frogs and toads. And then once it's ready, we can go ahead and turn that into an assignment by sending it to our LMS. All right. Now, now that we've learned how to create a template, how to create using a template, it's time that we embrace the blank canvas. And we're going to create something from scratch. Now, if you're interested, you can follow along with us in a Lucidchart document that mirrors our webinar doc. Just type this link into your browser. It is case sensitive, so make sure to include the capital letters. Alternatively, if you just want to watch, um, you're welcome to do that as well, and we'll send out these resources at the end of the webinar. Okay. So let's say that we want to teach, that I'm teaching my students about the solar system. I can use Lucidchart to create a basic concept map that helps my students organize information about a topic, deepen their mastery of that information, and also generate ideas. It can even serve as an authentic assessment tool, allowing students to explain their understanding in an, in an individual way and allow educators the opportunity to provide feedback. A concept map begins with a main idea, um, excuse me, and then it branches out to show how those main ideas can be broken down into specific topics. The lines connecting the topics are linked by phrases, explaining the connection between ideas. Creating a concept map is super simple inside Lucidchart, just using three elements, shapes, lines, and text. So go ahead and open up your training resources and let's go through the concept map tab. Now this activity has all the elements to show how to create a concept map. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit so that you can see this easier. So as you can see, we have some basic information on the upper left hand side about why concept maps are useful, how they can be created, and what you can do with them. This is also where I'm going to create my example. On the right hand side, you can see an idea or an example of what it is that we're going to create. On the bottom, we have a video showing one of our product experts teaching about concept maps that you could show to your class. That would make it an easy way for you to teach the principal. Then finally, on the bottom left-hand side is an area where you can go ahead and create your own example as you follow along. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these first couple of shapes. All right, so let's go ahead and create our concept map. The nice thing about concept maps is that they don't have to look perfect. They don't have to look exactly like the one that I created. We showed that example as we demonstrated the three different types of rocks. They could look differently and still display the same information. For this example, I'm not gonna use the flowchart shapes. I'm gonna go ahead and use these shapes on the left-hand side. I'm going to click and drag. So I'm gonna click on this rectangle, drag it out and let go of my mouse. And then I'm going to double click and put in my first term. So notice in the example that we had before, 
the solar system was that first, that first topic. So let's go ahead and put in the solar system. Now, you'll notice that there's an easy way for us to make some changes to the size. You'll see some little squares around the edges. If I go ahead and select one of them, I can drag this out to make it a little bit bigger. And now I'm going to go ahead and select a few other shapes that I can add. All right, on the left-hand side, this case, we had the sun. Next, we had planets. And going just a little bit further to the right, we had moons. All right, let's go ahead and add some lines. First, I think I'll reshape these. I'm gonna select and drag out a little box to select all of them. Now, if I do those same resizing shapes, I can make those a little bit more narrow. So let's go ahead and drag out a line. You'll notice four different circles or nodes, you might see arrows, that allow us to drag out from one box to the next. Now that first line that was drug out is a line that has an elbow. We can go ahead and make that change so that it is something that looks more like the one to the right by changing up here in our properties bar, the line option. We can choose curved, or in this case, we can use a straight line. Now I think I wanna have that be my default. So I'm gonna just go ahead and click anywhere on the canvas and now make that same change. You'll notice now that my default here always will show up as a straight line. We can go ahead now to connect a couple other lines to our concept map. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and give myself just a little bit more space. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make some connections between these other shapes. And I'm going to specifically choose from one shape to the next. I want to show why they're related. So I'm gonna drag from planets to the sun. You'll notice that there is an arrow indicating planets are related to the sun. We're gonna now add some text onto the line that explains why they're related. So I'm going to double click on the line and that will then allow me to say something like orbit. Planets orbit the sun. Up here on these lines, we might add includes, which explains solar systems include suns and planets. All right. Lastly, let's go ahead and make a relationship from planets to the moon. All right. So you can see very quickly, we can start adding just using three simple elements, text boxes, text, and lines that help us to understand how these two areas or how the solar system is composed. We've taken different things such as the sun, planets, and moons. We're showing how they're included. We have a whole bunch of other shapes here with, with text already filled out that will allow us to then create something that looks similar to over here on the right-hand side. So now that we have the structure of our concept map built, let's customize the look and feel. Stylizing your, custom, your, your concept map not only makes it nicer to look at, but it also helps direct students and others' attention. It can clarify the hierarchy of the chart. And it can also just make it more fun to look at. So we're going to use, again, those standard features up here on the top. Let's go ahead and change something such as the color. We can start with our first uh, box, and we may give that a blue color. Because that makes our text harder to read, we might change the text to be white. We might make it bold and even make it a little bit bigger. Doing that same selection process, we can select these other shapes and we may give them a different color to distinguish the difference between the two layers. There's a whole bunch of other types of formats that we could do. We could determine whether or not our shapes have curved curved edges, whether or, not, um, whether or not the arrows are straight or dashed, the different direction of the arrow. And you'll see all those different options up here at the top. Here's our lines. Here's where we're gonna determine which direction the arrow is facing. So there's a lot of options that I want you to explore as you start to create your own concept map. So we're off to a good start. I encourage you to continue working on this, if not while we're, while we're working here today, after we finish. So what ways could you see using a concept map in your classroom? All right, 
Now that we've got a good idea of our concept map, let's go through some additional information and shapes that we might use as we build out our concept map. So to add shapes, we can click on the left-hand side on this blue plus shapes button. All right, you'll see a number of different options here and I wanna highlight a few that are more specific to education. So first, let's focus on, we've got an equations editor. This makes it easy for you to build equations right inside Lucidchart. Students can then work those equations. It makes it easy for them to conceptualize them and to build them out. All right, floor plans is an awesome way to use Lucidchart. In fact, we see a lot of language classes that will use this to have a student create the floor plan of their room or their house or even the classroom and then label the different areas using the language that they have learned. All right, the next uh, example that I want to show is mind mapping. Mind mapping makes it really easy to put information onto the page and to start to brainstorm and come up with ideas as you are building out things such as how you want to go about a project or the ideas for um, a paper that you're writing. All right, timelines. We mentioned timelines in our preview. Timelines is another fantastic way to use Lucidchart. We've got a whole um, shape library devoted to timelines. And then last but not least, our good old friends, the Venn diagrams. If I select any of these shape libraries, notice that they come on my left-hand side and are ready for me to use. Next, in addition to shape libraries, we can also add additional content onto our page doing searches for things like images. So let's say we wanna take our concept map and instead of just using something with text boxes and uh, lines, we wanna create something that looks more like this using actual images or pictures or clip art. We can do that by searching over here on our left-hand side for something like an image of the earth. This is going to do a being safe search and allow me to bring that image right onto my canvas. Let's go ahead and resize that. And this can be connected the same way any of our shapes can be connected. Images are a fantastic way to find photos and images on the internet. If you want to find something more similar to a clip art, if you click on icons, it will do the exact same kind of search, but look for something that is more more like a clip art. We could also drag those same things onto our canvas and they also can be resized and connected just like any of our shapes. All right, now before moving on, I want to show you a few of my favorite Lucidchart tips to help you as you begin creating inside Lucidchart, as well as some resources. All right, we've already gone through the Alt, left click and drag to clone or copy an item. I probably use that every time I'm inside Lucidchart. Let me show you a couple of other things. This diagram that we're working in is kind of large and using your mouse, you can easily scroll up and down. If you're using a trackpad, you can also easily scroll left and right and up and down. But if I'm using a mouse, which I tend to do when I'm creating, I might use right click, which will allow me to grab anywhere on the canvas and move. A left click typically will create a box to select something or select a shape, but a right click will grab and drag. Again, if you're just using your, your touchpad, you can easily move around. All right. Now, um, another thing that I want to, to point out is some resources that you can use to navigate inside of Lucidchart. Remember, we've talked about a couple of things today. When we created our Venn diagram, you saw me using bullets. Let's pretend that you don't recall exactly where to find those bullets you can use something called Feature Find. Feature Find, once you select it up here on the right-hand side, will allow me to type in bullets. And it will then have a nice little blue arrow that will hover over and tell me exactly where I can go to find that option. In fact, I can also pin that option so that it's there open and it'll allow me as I use it in other areas of my of the project that I'm working on. In addition, with feature find, you might search for things such as maybe spell check or how to, um, how to print. But most likely what you're looking for might not just be where to find something. Let's pretend that you're looking for something that will give you information about how to do something inside of Lucidchart, such as you recall that I talked about um, presentation mode. 
Now, in addition to showing me how I can create a presentation slide, I can also select search presentation mode in our help center, which will take me to our help center resource and any articles and videos that have been created, which will make it really easy for me to learn about using that feature inside of Lucid. So feature find is a fantastic way for you to find things that maybe you forgot about or to look for things that you'd like to learn. Now, lastly, I'm going to highlight our help menu here at the top. You'll see a couple of things that look familiar, such as being able to go to the help center. You'll also see a hotkey reference sheet that can make it easy for those that really like to use hotkeys. But I want to, uh, to, to focus on is learn the basics. If I select learn the basics and let's say start with add a shape, this will make it easy for me to see how I can start using Lucidchart. If you're one that wants to make sure that your students have just an easy way to start, or if you're trying to familiarize yourself, you can go ahead and click through this. All right, fantastic. So now that we've learned how to create an assignment and activities in Lucidchart, both from a template and from scratch, let's see how we can turn our concept map into a group activity using Lucid's collaborative tools. Teachers and students love our collaborative features because it allows them to provide and receive instantaneous feedback. That can happen even when someone is working from home. It also allows students to, con to contribute their ideas together in real time. So we've already shown how we can share using an LMS, but let's share, let's, let's talk about how we can show, uh, how we can share directly from inside Lucidchart. All right, we're gonna come to that orange share button up here at the top right. It's gonna ask if I'd like to change the name of my, my project that I'm working on. Go ahead and just save it as is. And I'm gonna click on the advanced option to highlight everything that we can do. Now, the first thing, if we have already connected, we've got students in our account, we're already shared. If I start typing in the name of a person, such as the one that I shared with in our LMS example, I can start adding additional users and determine what level of permission do I want to give them. I might just give them view only. This is something I want them to consume. I might then give them edit and share because I want them to be working on this and creating. It could also be something where we have a group activity and we want to not only view, but we want to make sure they can collaborate and communicate and start to add comments on that diagram. We're going to leave this as edit and share. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on the share option. What this will do is it will then give that student an email to let them know that this has been shared. I can later on decide if I want to change that permission or to revoke it entirely. Now, if you have a different LMS uh, than one that we've been using, you can also click on create a shareable link, or this also might be a way to share via email. Just using those same options, we can determine what level of permission. In this case, let's do a comment and view and generate. Now I've got a shareable link. If I click on this option that I can go ahead and share directly with anyone who will then have that same level of permission. Okay. So now that we've shared, as you saw, I shared this with Adam's student. I'm going to go into my student view and we're going to take a look at this concept map as he begins to work in there with me. I'm going to jump off of my screen and you're going to still see as I work how this collaborative feature is going to work. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the shared with me. I'm going to go ahead and open. And as I do that, you'll notice that the student's name and icon is going to appear. So I now know that I've got someone in here with me. I might have three or four of those. As that person starts to work, you will be able to see their cursor moving. I'll also be able to see when they click on something and make a change. They might change the color of our text boxes, let's say. They might even add additional images. All right. You get the idea. So as they're working together, I can see everything that they're doing. This makes it really easy for us to start to work together. Now to make this even more simple, let's make it so that we can now start to communicate back and forth. We're working on this as a project and we want to maybe highlight different areas where we can work. On the right-hand side, I'm going to click on this little um, 
arrow, which will open up these, these, this menu of options. And I'm going to click on this history, excuse me, not history, but we're going to click on this comment option. And I'm going to go ahead and add a comment. So I'm going to right click on moons or click on moons. And then I will click on this plus comment. If I type at, and then the name of the person who's been shared, I can then ask them to work on this section. That student can then take that uh, and start to work and they can go ahead and respond back to that comment. And we're now starting to collaborate in real time. Now, if by chance they can't find where that comment is, they might be down here looking, they can click on this little pin, which will take them right to the area where the comment is being made. Now they know, okay, I need to work on the moon section. And we can start to work back and forth. Ultimately, someone will resolve that comment. We'll go ahead and do that here. The nice thing about comments, and the reason why I love them so much, is that we can always go back and look at resolved comments or any active comments. You can see how the comment worked, who, uh, who was the one speaking back and forth. This is powerful for a teacher who is looking at an, an example where students have collaborated together. I can see how they're working back and forth. And even though um, this doesn't tell the whole story, it definitely does give a piece of what happened during that group activity. Okay, now last but not least, let's say that as we were doing this project, something happened and maybe um, it didn't really go the way we wanted it to. Um, it got a little crazy. And we need to make some changes <laughs> to get back on track. All right, I'm gonna go to our revision history, which is just a couple of spots below our comment option. All right, I can see that these last changes, Adam was our culprit, he was the one that got us a little off track. I wanna click on, each of these are a snapshot of what, the, of what the diagram looked like at that moment in time. So if I click on a minute ago, I can see before things got crazy. Most likely, we're not talking about something that happened just a few minutes ago. It could be that as we've been working on this project, we go to our teacher and they say, it's looking good, you're a little off course, you might wanna go and do X, Y, Z. And they realize that it looked more similar to what they had a couple of days ago. They can then go find that moment in time and they can, let's just go back to what it looked like at the beginning here, and they can then decide they want to restore from that point in time. Now this doesn't invalidate everything that we've done before. It's just going to create this as a new entry point. We'll still be able to see where it got off course, where it changed, and that it was restored back to this point in time. There could also be a time where I as a teacher have created something and then um, it worked out really good, but I decided that there was an earlier version that might be good for a different type of activity. I could go find that version, again, let's assume it's this one, and instead of clicking restore, I might click new from revision, which will create a brand new document and that will be the only entry, there'll be no other history. So let's just go ahead and restore and get back to where we were at the beginning. Okay, so let's imagine that we're working together on this concept map assignment. And I wanna try and let my, I want to also, instead of just using a concept, just use me using a comment, I might wanna add some additional comments, uh, additional notes. I can right click on the solar system and I can add not just a comment, but a note. This will allow me to put as much text as I want. And then that text will show up as a note and that might give some other instruction to my students or to the people that I'm working with. All right, now let's say that my group has completed our concept map and we want to create a presentation of our work so we can share with the class. So as I mentioned earlier, Lucidchart makes it easy to create slides to demonstrate our learning by highlighting specific areas of the document that we've created. Now these slides are created uh, the slides that are created can also be exported as Google Slides, as I mentioned. So I'm gonna come to my right-hand content pane as well and click on Slides. All right. Now, you'll see a couple of the slides from the presentation I did earlier. We'll go ahead down toward the bottom and we'll click on Plus Slide. What this does, this will feel a little bit like Prezi. It's going to bring me to a little box that I can then determine 
to be the area for this slide. So we might start off with a, an overview that shows the entire concept map. Then we'll go ahead and add another slide. In this case, we're gonna make this one a little bit smaller as we focus now on the sun. And then lastly, we'll focus on planets. And you'll see I've got those slides here on the right-hand side. So this presentation mode now would allow me to call out certain areas of this concept map that I could present to the class to make it really easy for me to demonstrate the learning that I have, that I have received. All right. So finally, let's say that we want to insert our Venn diagram or our concept map or something that we've created into a report or a presentation that we are working on in either Google or Microsoft applications. By inserting a Lucidchart document into another application, like a Google Doc, I can always have the most up-to-date version as well as making it easy for others to access my document without having to go into Lucidchart. Let's go to my Google Docs page. I'll delete that example. So inside of Lucid, excuse me, inside of Google Docs, underneath our add-on options, I have the option to get add-ons. Now, if you haven't already added this, if you click on get add-ons, you'll typically see a Lucid chart as one of the first options due to our premier partnership with Google. Once you have clicked on the link to add it, you'll see it underneath your available add-ons. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click insert diagram. Now what this is going to do is it's going to bring open a pane on the right-hand side that will then be connected to my account. The first time I'll have to connect, but afterward I can go ahead and click on my diagrams and then I can look at um, my options here that I want to share. All right. In this example, let's go ahead and use one of our compare and contrast options. All right. Here I see the diagram preview. I can go ahead and click on insert. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to embed this into my Google Doc. This is not a static image, it's not a PDF, it's actually an embedded image, which means I have the ability to update it. If some changes get made, it's the morning of, our, of, uh, of the time where we're supposed to turn in our report, and I realize that we made some changes yesterday, I can come in here real quickly, click on, uh, click on this update option, and update all inserted documents. If while we're working on it, I realize, oh, I actually want to make some changes now. I can click on the link down here toward the bottom. That will take me into my, into my document. I can make some changes to it. And then ultimately, after I've made those changes, I can click on back to docs. It will take me right back to my Google Doc. The option inside of Google Slides works identical. Come to my add-ons. Lucid chart diagrams, insert my diagram, and then I have the ability to select what it is I want to embed so that I can use it in a presentation. Now you have the same option to create the same kind of, the same kind of uh, scenario with Microsoft applications. If you use Office 365, you can embed your diagrams inside of a Word doc, uh, Excel, or PowerPoint. All right. So ultimately today, we've learned a lot of ways to use Lucidchart in the classroom. You've seen that you can easily create an assignment in Lucid using three easy steps. Selecting a template, customizing it to your students' needs, and assigning it through your LMS or directly. You can create your own diagram from scratch, such as our concept map here that we created that will make it easy to teach a concept or help your students demonstrate their learning. Lucidchart also makes it easy for your students to collaborate on group projects through real-time collaboration, comments, and revision history. And then lastly, we just showed how you can easily embed Lucidchart into Google and Microsoft applications, as well as assign them through your LMS. So hopefully you've got some good ideas that you can take back into your classroom. We're excited to have you with us. 
We encourage you, if you have any questions, to reach out by going to support at lucidchart.com and also checking out our website, lucidforeducation.com. Thanks. Have a great day.